So this past Friday, I showed you guys a play out of single back bunch bass called PA Verticals. It's a standalone play that can be found on a variety of playbooks that is very effective. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link in the description because that play does go with this full scheme. Uh, today, I'm going to show you that full scheme out of bunch bass that I've been running with my custom playbook. And it's not only effective, but it's also very straightforward and simple for anybody to run. You know, this whole scheme started when I was telling you guys about the effectiveness of certain auto motion run plays in this year's game. I'd always planned on showing you this halfback counter to this formation because it not only has two pulling guards, but also the auto motion as a third blocker, giving us lots of room to pick up yards. You know, we can either take it to the outside or we can take it off tackle in behind our blockers. And even if we do take it outside, the blockers will continue upfield, allowing us to run free, just like you saw right there. You know, obviously the biggest issue with auto motion plays are, do you have another identical auto motion that is a pass play? And luckily for this formation, the answer is yes. And we're going to take a look at that in a second. But with that said, you know, this run play, even by itself, with our opponent being able to manually jump the snap because it is an auto motion, allowing him to tell when the snap was going to happen, the three blockers that we have are going to do a great job of blocking that user defender. You know, running the ball is clearly over-effective in this year's game, and pretty much any running back can get the job done to pick up yards. But for me, when I know the scheme that I'm going to use has more of a home run hitting type run, you're really going to want to have a fast halfback like your Chris Johnson, Lamar Miller, Darren McFadden, Reggie Bush, etc. Using this run play, you know, you're going to hit the home run often. And if I'm using more of a move the chains type offense that I'm comfortable, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable using any team, any running back. But personally, I just find it somewhat of a waste when I know on any given down, I can reach the end zone on this run play, whereas an Eddie Lacy type running back from Green Bay, he's going to hit the home run now and again, but a lot less likely chance of doing so. So just take that into consideration, you know, not only for this run player scheme, but for any scheme that you choose to run this year. There's a lot of big plays in this year's game, and nothing is worse than being caught from behind when you know you could have been in the end zone with another player. So the play that we're going to call that has identical auto motion to the run play is base PACTR waggle. Now, I am going to use a hurry-up offense when running this scheme. I just find that even though it is very simple, there's so much that we can throw at them. It just makes it very hard to defend. So I'm going to set this play up. Um, now, what's going to happen is because it does have identical auto motion, um, I, ju I just want to run the run play to start the game. I'm going to continue to run the base halfback counter until we find that our opponent's stopping us with that. I mean, there's no reason to stop running it if it's going to work, right? Then, once I see that he's going to try to come down and user defend that, you know, it's an auto motion two, three, four times in a row, he's like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to come down and try to manually jump the snap and tackle him in the backfield. The first time that I see him try to bite down on this run play, that's when I'm going to go to this pass play in a hurry up offense. I prefer to call it when I know that my opponent is playing man to man defense, but even if he's playing zone defense, there's some things that we can do to beat that as well. Um, it's, I mean, it's very effective against both. So, um, against one safety deep, I'm going to put both outside receivers on slants, and I'm going to put the tight end in the middle on a streak route. And then the auto motion, that's going to make it look identical to the run play. If I'm positive that he's going to play man defense, and I'm going to put A on an out route. And the reason I'm going to do that is because as the game progresses, if he starts to try to jump down this on this B route, then I want to make sure that I have a second option against man defense. If I think that he's... You know, he's doing a good job of mixing up his zones and stuff like that. Uh, and man defense, I think he's going to call zone. Then I'm going to put A on an in route. The in route does not do a very good job against man, but it kills zone coverage. Uh, and even though there's slants and then a, a in route over the middle, these routes will not interfere with each other as far as the in and a slant. Now take a look at the B route. Just like I said in the other play, this is an unbumpable route. And we're going to take huge advantage of it and just get wide open for easy catches all day long as long as they're playing man defense. Now there is going to be somewhat of an issue that's going to happen from time to time. It's very rare where these slant routes are going to run into each other. But if they don't, uh, which like I said, it very rarely happens, then we're just going to, I mean, we're going to hit this all day long. You're going to see it in the gameplay footage. We can bullet pass it so that doesn't happen. Uh, we can lob it. I mean, we could do whatever. You're going to see and like I said, if that route is covered, then we just want to hit this out route. I mean, it's going to get wide open separation all day long as well. 
So let's take a look at the replay. I didn't quite see what happened. I mean, I knew I was going to throw. I knew I called man defense. So just take a look at the slant route running over the middle. I mean, this defender here is supposed to be covering him, and it's just like no chance. The only thing is, um, it, it did happen right there, practice mode. These guys bump into each other, and it, I mean, the guy's wide open still. It doesn't really matter, but you're going to see occasions where they bump into each other, and then it really slows down the play, and then you might end up throwing into coverage. This X route, even though it is not unbumpable, as you can see right there, he does get bumped. Still going to get good separation. I mean, slant routes kill man defense. So I, ju I just love this play to take advantage of the auto motion. And on top of that, we can just take advantage of the slant route being unbumpable. And that's pretty much it. So now we're going to take a look at the gameplay footage for this play, mainly focusing on the unbumpable B receiver. As you're going to see throughout this video, you know, 98% of the time, these routes will not interfere with each other leaving a wide open pitch and catch. Uh, we can either throw a bullet or we can throw a lob pass. It's just going to be wide open. Against man defense, it's an easy read. Against zone, we have two slants, and we really just need to wait until one of the slants is about to run through open space and throw the ball. Uh, with two slants, for the most part, one of the two will be open. Just don't force it if they're not open early because they will get open soon enough. That's just the nature of zone defense in Madden 25. I mean, it's... It's really not good enough to be able to cover uh, slants like these uh, across the middle. The only really way is if they have good defense on one side and they're manually covering the other side. Just Zone defense just plays real weird this year. So, uh, Like I said, this is a play that I'm going to mostly go to when I think my opponent is playing man coverage. Uh, just because of the fact that it has big play potential of the B receiver getting wide open, as you can see in open space there. Also keep in mind that you can put the auto motion on a route for another option in the passing game. I personally do not do that just because I love abusing the halfback counter. But if you like the unbubbable slant so much that you feel this could be a base play, then by all means put the auto motion on a route as well. It's something that I throw into from time to time, but not too often. Also, if you know you happen to make a bad read when your receiver bumps into his own player or the crossing defender, just make sure that you have good click on skills because then, like you're going to see here, we can just moss dudes for touchdowns like this. So now just a couple examples of the X route. Uh, the first one, my opponent thinks I'm going to be running the ball because of the auto motion. He gets caught up in the blocking and we throw to an essentially wide open X. You know, just with a couple steps, there's really nothing the defender is going to be able to do to make a play. The next time it's zone and my opponent tries to take away the B leaving X wide open. You know, these are basically the situations that we want. Our opponent is just guessing. So like I said, it's really nothing fancy looking. It's just effective. Now let's take a look at the wildcard route. Now in the first play, I see him lurking the B receiver, despite the fact that the defender actually somehow stays with him while in man defense. But unfortunately, the out route murders man coverage, and it's an easy completion. The X route was also actually wide open. Then again, zone because of the smart route and in route. All three wide receivers are completely wide open, but I choose the in route. Now in this play, B is open early, but I notice that despite the zone coverage down low, the tight end is actually one-on-one -on -one against man coverage, and I like that matchup almost always. And finally, he plays smart defense, heavily zoned up on the right side, manually covers the left, but with the coverage so low, I'm able to pass lead a streak to the inside. So the next play we're going to look at, I don't actually have any gameplay footage for, even though I do use it as part of my scheme. The reason is because uh, I could have swore somebody already did a video for this play, so I was just trying to stay away from it. But I uh, just searched again, and apparently that's not true unless they took it down. So uh, the play is called Seattle or Verticals. I mean, it's been around for years. Uh, the only difference is it's, it's effective every year. It's just a matter of the little you know details as far as when you throw the ball and what it's good against. So, uh, against zone defense, I like A, and I really like every route against zone defense. Against man coverage, I don't really like the A route, but it's so good against zone that we definitely keep it as is. Um, and RB and B, depending on the defensive formation, I mean, B is going to be great against man every time. Depending on the formation, uh, RB is going to be effective as well against man. Now, we can put Y on a wheel route as long as we're on the right side of the field. If we're on the left, it's going to interfere with the routes on the right. 
Uh, we can leave X on a streak. We can put them on a drag. It doesn't really matter. So um, let's take a look. First against zone, it's going to be run the same way that we ran the fake wide receiver screen wheel, which is as soon as our route kind of gets out to the outside, we throw a bullet. And as you can see there, the defender doesn't even make an attempt to even cover that wide receiver in man defense. And this is going to be the case um, all the time. As you can see here, he kind of gets faked out first of all, and that's fine. He tries to recover. But then after that, as you can see there, as soon as we throw the ball, see our arm on our quarterback is going, and then the defender just glitches out. He just, as soon as we go to throw it, he takes a step, doesn't even try to tackle our defender. And as soon as we get our hands on the ball, then he attempts to make a play. And we've already picked up almost 15 yards. Um, against man defense as well, we can potentially hit B, RB, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, so as you can see, we're still able to pick up another 10 to 12 yards. Let's mix up the defenses here. Uh, we'll go to like a cover two. Uh, I, I generally do like to block the running back. I mean, the routes on the right are so effective. I don't really need the wheel route unless I'm playing max coverage defense. But, uh, okay, so let's go here. And, yeah, okay, so we hit RB even though he didn't catch the ball. Let's go again. I'll show two examples, I guess, of every play. Let's just see what receivers end up getting open. Okay, so there I just wait. I see that it's like a cover two, and then I just wait until the de um, the receiver gets in behind the defender against cover three. I mean, this is going to be the case against all zone defenses. Uh, they just do a really good job, whether it's cover two, cover three, cover four, cover six. It doesn't matter. As long as you're patient and don't try to rush a pass, I mean, just look. Guys are going to get wide open. So here we're able to hit this flat pass, and we don't get too many yards. It's against a zone coverage defense. Let's do it again. I'll do it against a cover three. What are we at? We have three minutes of this play already. This is why I prefer to just do it over gameplay footage because I tend to have long videos. <laughs> so here, yeah, I mean, we love the A route. As you saw, it got wide open. Let's even do it one more time, I guess, just for funsies. Like, the X route is really just, I mean, when I'm calling this play, X doesn't even really do much. It's more of like if I see that he ends up getting wide open on the streak. I mean, we could put him on an out route, a smart routed out route, I guess. We could put him on a drag. Let's see, we're going against cover three. And then, yeah, see, as long as we're patient, I mean, against zone defense, guys are just going to get wide open. So uh, the plays that I'm going to have in my audibles are base halfback counter, base PACTR waggle, PA verticals, and Seattle. The other play that we're going to use in our scheme is the play that I'm just about to show you guys. So the icing on the cake pretty much for this scheme is the halfback toss. This is a play that was absolutely useless last year and is very effective this year. As everyone knows, the wide receiver blocking in this year's game is way too overpowered, and the three wide receivers on the right are much more of a help. In a bunch set, defenders never fully line up over the wide receivers. It's usually like two defenders covering three receivers with... The other defender playing more towards the middle and that allows us to get the advantage in the numbers game since wide receivers block so well not to mention the tackle pulls to the outside now with all that said it's not a perfect run play and it's really not even close to a dominant run play you can definitely still get smacked in the mouth in the backfield but once i start seeing less defenders on the right side i'm calling this play we have so much working with great success to the left side including the counter run that will start to favor left, especially with a user defender, that once I see that, especially with a speedy halfback, I'm running this toss play.